Hey Folkies! I thought of making a little video because something happened to my Nickel Harpa and I thought that it could be helpful to many of you. So sometimes, you know, when you play Nickel Harpa, you notice that there is a zing sound. So for example, this sound, you hear it? Not when I play kind of soft, then it's fine, but if I play a little bit um, louder, you have this sound. And that's happening very often with these complicated beasts that are nickel harpas. So I thought we could just learn how to fix the sound. Most of the time it's not hard to fix. So when this kind of sound happens, usually it's that one of the resonance strings is hitting on something else. It can either be another resonance string or a piece of the keyboard. When it's another resonance string, it's kind of difficult because you will have to adjust the placement of the resonance strings on the bridge. So depending on the design of your nickel harp by recording the resonance strings, it will be easier or harder to adjust that. However, when it's not a resonance string hitting on another one, it's a resonance string hitting usually on one of the tangents, and that's quite easy to fix by yourself. Um, so what you need to do is first hit the right note that is concerned by this problem. Here I found it quite quickly. It's, uh, it would be an E normally, but here I'm in baroque tuning, so it's kind of an E flat. <laughs> And the resonance string, you can, I mean, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's the one that is kind of next door. It's just here. And it makes sense that it would be this one that has a problem because it's the closest one to the tangents. And then what you have to do is to check which tangents could be in the way for this string to resonate. And usually where the problem is, is in the middle of the ringing length. And very often it's the highest keys. Depending on your nickel harpa design on the keyboard, you will have keys there or not, like the number of keys just varies enormously. With these keyboards that are absolutely gorgeous and super useful, by the way, designed by Jean-Claude Condé, there is often this problem that because you have these extra keys up there that are in the middle length, middle ringing length of the strings, um, you often have this kind of problem that the ringing resonance strings hit on these little tiny tangents. The quickest fix is just to remove them. So just like, oh, I see that this one is hitting and you just kind of... If this one wants, of course it doesn't. Yeah, it does. You just remove it. If you are like at a concert or if you want to do a recording and really it's a pain and you don't want to spend time carving wood, you can just remove the tangent or like all the ones that you know you're not gonna use. In my case, I really want to fix it. And also I use those upper tangents, especially on the second string. string quite often, so I want to fix the problem now. Uh, by the way, most nickel harpas, you should be able to remove the tangents quite easily. It's easier if the climate is dry, if the climate is wet, humid. Um, it will be harder because the wood just gets bigger uh, and sticks more like to each other, like the two pieces get stuck into each other more. Um, you should not glue these tangents in there. If it's glued, it's very bad because you want to be able to tune them, especially the upper string, the first string. Um, so that's the way to tune them, but you also want to be able to remove them also in case they break or if they need some fix like now. As you see, these are already carved and that's where we can work. We can take away a little bit of wood where the resonance string is, which is usually in the deepest of the curve there, or on the little kind of, I don't know if you see, but kind of thicker part here. So I'm gonna check which one is the closest and try to find which one is hitting. I think it might be this one. Let's check. <laughs> It looks like it this, it's this one. So I'm gonna remove it, just gently. If you can't remove it with your fingers, uh, you can also use a pliers, but be very, very careful. 
um, it leaves marks if it's one with like dents and also well basically it can dam damage them so just be nice <laughs> with your tangents but also if you break a tangent it's not the end of the world like these are quite easy to replace you just have to find a piece of wood that is big enough and then carve it I mean if you're not a handcrafter at all it will be a bit difficult but it's not hard to replace them so in case they break or in case you lose one also when the climate is very dry don't be scared like they are really not that big of a deal if the keys break it's a bit more of a problem um, but these really like it's nothing delicate it's not even super important in the worst case it just you just have a hole for a while and you avoid this t this stone while you either carve a new one yourself or you get someone to do it for you um, yeah so now let's carve this thing okay so how to fix uh, this little fellow is to use usually a knife knives are used in instrument building quite often and you need a very sharp knife this is my all-purpose handcrafting knife that I use kind of all the time and sharpen a lot but there are specific instrument building knives that are usually very tiny and very sharp and you need to sharpen them very often and they're very good no matter which kind of knife you use just be careful to not cut yourself and use something sharp sharp tools are less dangerous than non-sharp tools because they, they will cut through so you will not have to force Whereas if you have something that is a little bit blunt, then it rips and you get it in the finger. Still be very careful with your sharp tools, of course. So you just get there and you just basically carve out a little bit of wood. <laughs> and you just, you just remove some tiny, tiny scraps of wood. Um, you just try to not make it too small, the tangent, in the end, because of course if it's too small it's probably gonna be very weak and might break quite easily but as said tangents are not a big deal if it breaks you just get a new one and you redo the work again it's annoying but it's not like it's it's no problem it's no big deal your nickel harpa will be fine just carve the thing if you are new to carving and or if you don't like knives or if you are not sure that you manage without cutting yourself or something you can also use this kind of tiny key files. I have quite a few. They're not really made for wood, they're made for metal in principle. But they're really good and you take one that is slightly rounded and you can do the same thing. So you can just go in the place where you want to remove some material. It's a bit easier with a file. It goes a bit quicker with a knife often. Depends what you feel for, what you have as tools. It's really good to have these tiny files in general when you're tinkering with kind of mechanical instruments um, but seriously it's it's what works for you just be nice be gentle take care of your fingers and I'm a savage I do that where I play but it's better if you do that on a woodworking space where dust and so on are not a problem that you need to clean later on <laughs> and while you do that often you want to take your instrument and check again and see if there is more that needs to be removed or if it's enough because it's quickly quickly too much <laughs> that we remove and as much as you can keep you will keep basically and you see with your eyes if it's too close or not and then you try with the note that you knew was a problem here i still have a bit of zik still here so we have to remove a little bit more so I guess I will do a little bit more on the one I just did so this one and then I will also do some more on this one because this is very very close to maybe on this one too just work one one tangent at a time sometimes it's very obvious which which tangent it is and sometimes it's not so you just have to work your way forward uh, nicely and patiently take a nice morning or afternoon or evening and just do this while you listen to nice music or watch videos or talk with a friend
and it's cozy and you're showing love to your instruments you're taking care of their health and wait and of the sound of your music if you're not very used to woodworking or instrument tinkering in general um, and or if the tangents are long or I don't know it's better to mark where the string is so you know where to take away from the tangent so here I'm gonna take away here maybe and so you when you take it out you can see where it is and you don't need to remember which is not as easy as we can think maybe it's a good idea to have a few extra tangents I say that but I don't have any myself but especially if you live in a climate that has big changes in not only temperature but also humidity it's a very good idea to have a few extra predefined tangents usually you have slightly different types per strings for example these are from the A string or like the first string this is from the D string so they are slightly different they are a bit bigger on bigger strings and then for me on the lowest string if I find one that wants to come out easily no they don't want to but this one and on the biggest string they are way bigger so um, it's good to have one of each and you can just shape the round part already and this one kind of roughly and then you can adjust it in case you break one or lose one in Swedish climate in winter it gets really really dry so instruments well first they don't like it and also um, they tend to lose <laughs> their tangents quite a bit I have had two times while playing a concert that I lost one or several tang tangents and then you have to go fetch them on the floor <laughs> and it's <laughs> it's really the kind of stress that you don't like in winter um, when you are doing this kind of work on your instrument it's a good idea also just when you feel them and you feel oh this one is kind of loose it's not a bad idea to just take them out and you kind of lick them and then you put them back and your saliva is gonna make the wood like expand a little bit and stick in better it's a good idea to do that before a concert <laughs> so you don't happen to have the same problem as I had and lose a tangent in the middle of a concert not pleasant but again your instrument is not broken it's not bad for it it's just annoying for you also tip the saliva thingy uh, don't do it when you're just trying the piece on the nickel harpa because obviously else it will be very very hard to remove also if you use a knife it's still good to file or to use a little bit of uh, sandpaper so you don't have a little bit sticking out it's better if it's kind of smooth also because it won't catch humidity as much and it won't just stick out and interfere with your resonance strings again which is what we are trying to avoid okay. uh, don't forget also just one thing some keyboards including mine are having I mean usually they do have a lot of space here so in between the body of the instrument and the keyboard and this makes that when you press on the top of it of the keyboard it moves here so when you press the key back the tangent sorry when you press the tangent back just hold the keyboard from under don't just press like this because you might just press way too hard and it might crack some things just hold the keyboard under and then then press the key then you can press the thing and it will not damage anything it's just mechanics it's nothing scary but you have to be gentle wood is very resistant but it's also fragile it's both depending on how much pressure and in which direction you apply to it same thing when you take out a tangent that is a bit hard I like to do with my fingers because as said pliers damage the wood but also hold the keyboard a little bit while you pull it up and you can turn it I usually turn a little bit while I pull <laughs> sometimes they really don't want to come but usually they will and there's still some of it that I 
don't really know which one it could be. Hmm. One of the best ways that you can find which tangent it is that hits the resonance strings is to play this problematic note. You hear it's still there when you play very strong. So you remove the tangents one by one. I've already removed five of them and it's still buzzing. So it's not one of these. So I will try to remove... What was it? This one? That's... Uh, no. Wait, this one I thought maybe was the one that would be buzzing. And then you play again. And if it was this, this key, obviously, it would stop buzzing now. Feels that there is still a teeny tiny buzzing if I really play loud. No, very little, actually. There is a teeny tiny thing left, but much less. So it was probably this one. So if you don't manage to see which tangent is the problem, you can do that. You just remove them one by one. Just be careful <laughs> to not mix them up. Um, you can actually swap tangents, but usually try not to, because they all have like their specific shape and everything. And I mean, usually if you have two that are quite close, for example, if you swap, well, these two that are still on my Nicarpa there, um, it won't be much of a problem, but if you swap two that are very further away, much further away, um, they might be, like, usually these ones are much bigger than the ones on the other part, the other end of the keyboard. Also, never swap tangents from different strings because they have different lengths and thicknesses and so on. Okay, so I've actually been at it for a few hours and uh, it didn't work, the fixing. So it's kind of a bad example, but I thought it was still interesting because uh, what is happening there is that I think my string, my resonance string that is doing this sound is just hitting on another string, which is much harder to fix as explained in the beginning of the video. So I have carved pretty much all the tangents out and it's still buzzing and I think it's just hitting on the string that it's next to. I can't see it, but it also sounds more like it. When it hits on a tangent, it tends to be a kind of short and sharp sound, but when it hits on another tangent, it's a bit more like resonating, because it's another string, it's a bit more metallic somehow. So I fixed in another way, <laughs> which I think is also important to know. The way of tuning your resonance strings differs a lot depending on who you listen to. Most people, I think, have it tuned in half tones, so very much of a chromatic scale, starting on G or G sharp and going all the way up. However, you can tune in different ways. <laughs> there is, for example, the way of Erik Sahlström. I don't remember exactly how it is, but it's supposed to make your instrument sound better. And then there are people who find their own solutions for having a better sound. And you can also fix buzzing problems by tuning differently. My nickel harpa is tuned in a weird way, because when I changed the resonance strings a few years ago, I didn't check about the tension, and I noticed the tension just when I'm, I was about to tune, like, to the definite tone. And so I realized that the strings that I had ordered, that are guitar strings, should be tuned differently depending on the tension. Obviously, the strings that can have the highest tension can go higher, <laughs> while the ones with the lowest tension will go lower. But this is not always the truth when you have buzzing problems. When you have a buzzing problem, the very easy way to fix that is to make the string less loose. So you will tune it up. Which means that you will have to tune another string down. And that's exactly what I did. So here, this string that I, I had problems with that was buzzing was an E flat. But now I tune it up to an E. And so the string that was an E, I tuned down to E flat. So I exchanged their position in the scale, if you want. So now I can play this tune, this note, which was a problematic one. And there is no problem because the string that is under is placed correctly and doesn't have any problem in general. 
and when I play the tone that leads to this resonance string that I had problems with, which is now an E, it doesn't buzz anymore. Because it's a little bit more tense, a little bit harder, and therefore it doesn't ring as much. So although my long hours of fixing now um, have not been paying off, I wanted to talk about that because it's also a very good fixing way. In general, carving your tangents a little bit when you have a buzzing sound is a good fix, but mostly when you can see where the problem is. When it doesn't seem to be a bit everywhere, and also when it's just about one or two tangents. Like, seriously, if you have to carve out more than three or four tangents, just find another fix, in a way. <laughs> it's better to do that than nothing, but changing the tensions of the strings is also a very, very good help. Um, especially when you have strings that hit on each other, so resonance strings that touch when they are vibrating. It's the easiest way I know, else you will have to carve either the string holder there uh, or the bridge and that's kind of scary. <laughs> but it's also possible to do, just you kind of have to know what you're doing and or ask someone who is a, an instrument builder or who has some experience about this kind of stuff. So yeah. We saw two fixes for some kind of buzzing problem on the Nicole Harpa. You can either see that it's a tangent that is in the way of a resonance string, so you take it out and you can carve it a little bit, so you remove the friction part, basically, the contact point. Or sometimes it can also be like a key itself, and then you can just make a little dent in it or something. It do as long as it's tiny, it's not a problem. And if your resonance strings are a bit low especially, it can be an, e an easy fix, just simply. So that's the first fix, just carving out a bit of wood that is in the way of a resonance string. Or, huh, it's snowing and raining at the same time. Hmm, interesting. Um, so second fix is to change the tensions of your resonance strings. Basically exchange two of them so that the one that was problematic is suddenly a little bit more tense. These two fixes are only working for these specific cases. So when it's a resonance string hitting something, either a keyboard part or another string. However, there are many other buzzing noises that can happen on a nickel harpa, and it's not nice buzzes like on a hurdy-gurdy, <laughs> but it's um, annoying buzzing. You can have a buzzing sound, especially when you play low or on lower instruments, such as octave harpa, that are basically the whole keyboard that is vibrating. And it's very much harder to fix. In that case, you kind of need to take the keyboard apart. I haven't found yet an easy fix for this kind of big sound that you can have in the keyboard. Maybe there is. If you know of any fix for this kind of problem, just let me know in the comments. But as far as I know, you need to take it apart and fix stuff. Or you just accept that your nickel harpa has a weird sound in the lower tones, which can also be some kind of charm. Else you can also have all these kind of problems that can also happen on a violin, uh, viola or cello and so on, which is that you have other things that are vibrating and they create these wolf tones that are quite hard to get rid of and then maybe you need to get like a wolf tone fix by an experienced violin builder or nickel harpa builder. But I think they are not as common on nickel harpa as they are on, for example, cello. That is pretty much all. There are certainly other buzzing weird noises that can happen on the nickel harpa because it's a complicated mechanics, but I wanted to tell you about this easy fix because it's a quite common one and it's really not that hard to fix. And I also think it's important that you learn to put your hands in this keyboard and to not be afraid of it and to learn to fix it by yourself, especially in pandemic times, when it's a bit hard to travel and meet a Nikapa builder, especially when you live in a place where there are not so many. Uh, so it's good to learn to do things on your own. So now we can play. And I don't have any buzzing problem. <laughs> Very happy. Uh, that is all for me today. It was not as quick fix as I intended, but I hope it was still a very interesting video for you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm always glad to get your critics, ideas, suggestions and all. 
Don't forget that the algorithm is not nice towards little musicians like me and small channels, so if you can like and subscribe, and you can also just write a random comment, just write random comment or something, or the title of your favorite Nicole Harper tune, for example, in the comments it helps the algorithm see me better and then I can basically get more views and more motivation to make more videos. Also, as I'm still not paid by YouTube because bleh advertisement, you can support me on Patreon and you can get a few extras like early access and a few behind the scenes posts. That's one of the best ways to support me. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Hey Noah!